Hello, welcome to UV Utah Valley Technology and Genealogy Group's second half of our regular meeting. Today is October the 12th, 2024. It's a, a beautiful fall day. Um, today, um, in the second part of this meeting, we want to welcome those who are on Zoom, those who are watching from Facebook, and those also who may be watching this meeting later in their pajamas. Um, we often have people from other countries, um, and so we would want to extend a great welcome to all of you. Today's meeting is um, going to be entitled Family History That Last, Organize, Protect, and Preserve and Connect by Larry Castillo. Um, a quick bio of Lari, um, a, a longer one was given previously in the prior meeting. Um, she was raised in um, California, which is why you will see palm trees and that in Lari. Her husband, Jerry Castillo, is a big help in our organization. Um, they met at BYU. Um, Lari has a degree in um, AA in Communications and Fine Arts and a BS in Consumer Economics. Um, they have two children and seven grandchildren. She is our first vice president in the Utah Valley and Technology Group um, and a board member. She's also been an officer in the, um, the Utah um, um, Genealogical Society. She has been a long-term um, serving at the BYU Family History Library, a teacher. She's taught at numerous um, professional conferences and is also a professional researcher in, in many areas all over the world, um, German, um, influenza, and that um, her interests include history, mystery, geography, and genetics, and um, we are grateful for her expertise. And uh, with that, we want to um, note that those that are watching, if you have questions, to please put it in the chat um, in Zoom. Or if you're on Facebook, then um, put it in the Facebook comments. And at the conclusion, we will return to those questions. Or if they come up during the meeting, Laurie may choose to address them as part of her meetings. And so I believe we'll turn the time now over to you, Laurie. Thank you. Um, well, here we go. When my husband and I were first married, I told him about the way my parents acted about my schoolwork, my arts and crafts projects and awards. There was no display of them anywhere, not even on the refrigerator. Homemade Christmas ornaments were barely tolerated on the tree and only in the back facing the wall. The Mother's Day and Father's Day projects I, I don't know what happened to any of them, which I had labored over mightily. These pictures are not my childhood home. What I hope they convey is the idea that there was no sign that a child or children lived there and no sign of ancestors either. Why am I telling you this? So you can cry with me? No. I want you to know how I succeeded in making my own children's lives different. My husband spent many years as a woodworker before moving on to a career in computers. I had him make a special shelf that has hung in the living room of each of the places we inhabited since. In the beginning, I used it to keep a few nice things safe. When each child began their participation in church and school activities, the shelf at last began its true service. Whenever a child brought home something they had created or earned or a notice of something they had participated in, that item went on the shelf. If it was a flat paper item, I slipped it into a sheet protector and displayed it using a small metal or wooden easel. When the children were ready to leave home, their basic life story um, in mementos was ready to go with them because after those things were displayed for somewhere between a week and a month, 
uh, I had them take those sheets and put them in a binder. And they ended up calling those their special books. Um, and so those were put in the binder chronologically. And uh, these things can be shared with their spouses, in-laws, children, and friends without fear of damage because they are in protective holders. Any additional stories or information they wish to include could be added to create a fuller life story. You can see why, here, when did you see these? D-rings were the, the thing that we really were pleased about earlier. Now they have slant D-rings, which are even, even better. You can see why they're so effective see that with only a three and a half inch spine width on here, you can get 635 sheets in. Now that's just plain paper, not with the sheet protectors, but there you go. Um, I should mention that we have kept separate photo albums, taking enough photos and purchasing double prints so there would be enough for separate albums for each person in the family and for the grandmas. <laughs> Probably the most useful and most cost-effective archival supplies are sheet protectors. They come in a myriad of sizes. Whatever size or shape you use, they must be acid-free and archival safe, nothing less. Let's talk about clear versus no glare. You only want to use clear. The no glare material is damaging. I don't know if you have ever stuck your hand inside a no glare sheet protector. If you do, you will feel a rough pebbly surface that will chew at the contents placed in it. That is why we must avoid them with anything. Um, that's, we hope to preserve the the thickness of the plastic of these sheet protectors is measured in mils. And um, there are many styles, which, which you, we, you'll you see examples of those here just shortly. Um, they also come in all sizes for photos, memorabilia, and flat ephemera of all types. And some have color edges. So here we are, and this, this is, um, shots of the Avery brand and all the different thicknesses they make. Their economy sheet protectors are two mils thick. Their standard are 2.4. And you would be surprised at what a difference it is between the economy and the standard. I wouldn't use anything less than standard weight. Um, the heavy weight are 3.3 mils. And the super heavyweight are five mils. You can see that right down at the bottom there. Um, for other brands, this is a, what they call premium heavy duty sheet protectors, from this Office Works brand. For, uh, so for other brands, the thicknesses may be different. So you wanna be sure you read the label and know what you're getting. Um, what weight you use depends on what you wish to store in them and how much support it needs. These are examples of multi-page expanding sheet protectors, believe it or not. Um, Sam Sill and Office Depot have 50-page capacity sheets. Avery and Staples sheets have a 70 page max capacity. These work well for magazines, booklets, large brochures, and paper bound books, college papers, and other projects. Office Depot even has some that have 100 page capacity. And Echo Brands Wilson Jones line has sheets that contain up to 250 pages. You may notice on this, uh, the, the, the one that's in green here, the Wilson Jones, that the label is in English and French, and that's because the company is from Canada. 
All right. And yes, they do have multi-page sheets in heavy duty. So if you want it, they've probably got it. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to show you a kind of a close-up picture of what it looks like when you, how they expand when you put these um, booklets in and uh, brochures in there. These are legal size sheet protectors in both portrait and landscape layouts. And you can see the, um, the portrait version is even, um, has extra punches in it for different uh, types of binders. These are the same thing in the 11 by 17 format. These might work well for maps or charts, blueprints, et cetera, that you might want to include with your family story. These 11 by 17s can actually fit in a regular size binder because they come folded in half. This would be great for including copies of maps or other charts in your history display binders. The 11 by 17 size is also called tabloid size. And now for my favorite type of sheet protectors, secure top sheet protectors. There, there's the close up. Hopefully you can really see how they work in this enlargement. They have a plastic flap at the top that folds down over, over the top to um, prevent dust and dirt and moisture from damaging the contents. I use these on all my original documents and best photos. And yes, they are available in super heavyweight <laughs> at Avery and Office Depot. Um, there are more brands than I'm showing you here. I just wanted to give you a scattering of an idea that you can just Google to find more. All right. From time to time, I've been able to find these uh, pages, which are also um, secure tops and in half sheets, or sheets divided in half, or in fourths, and each of those little pockets has a fold over the top. And the, there are sheets that are, are called 11 punched. And if you count up those holes, that's how many there are. Um, and this allows them to fit in variously arranged binders, even European A3, A4, and A5 sizes, which have two or four rings instead of the three we're used to seeing here. There are even more styles, including this quick load design. I think these colored edge sheets could be useful in separating uh, topics or family lines in a presentation folder. You can obtain sets of sheet protectors that are bound together in a separate book or in bunches for use in a binder. These sheets are available in so many sizes and arrangements, thanks to collectors. Here you can see those for paper currency. These could be used for other ephemera as well, such as concert or sports tickets, etc. These pages were made for coins, stamps, even SD cards. You can see they come in a number of sizes. And here's a close-up of one with the larger pockets showing some kind of buttons or um, medallions or something. They have these sheets that are available for negative storage. Uh, the first images are for 35 millimeter negatives. These come in uh, backed in white or in the see-through style, so you can view them with a light box. Uh, next are the 120 size um, negatives. And um, you can find these in most every other size you might need to match camera and film sizes of old. There are sheets for, for standard slides. There are also special boxes for storing slides. So however you would want to store those. These are pages for stereo image slides. 
And these sheets are for storage of stereo view picture cards or slides. And this is a picture of tipping houses af just after the earthquake in 1906 in San Francisco. Um, archival bags are another storage option. Um, for pub these are good for publications of all sizes, such as books, comics, newspaper, and all sizes of magazines. These are also available for artwork, photos, and documents. The bags can then be stored in archival boxes. There are even 12 by 12 inch sheets for three ring or post style scrapbooks. I think it's pretty awesome. Now for a minute, we'll talk about archival photo supplies. And of course there are photo sheet protectors. But first, anything that sticks like magic will end up tragic. Keep that in mind. Many of us have learned this the hard way. These are those fantastic albums that we all thought were so cool because we could get our photos in there so quickly. And if you have any of these and you have photos in them, you will notice that your your, uh, your photos are turning colors uh, and not in a good way. Uh, if you have photos in such an album, you want to scan the album. Any album that you work on, you'd want to, scal to scan the pages as they are intact in chronological order before you ever try taking the album apart. Uh, you want to test the photos to see if they will come out easily. And if not, try the dental floss trick and check the... Um, the handout in uh, for our for the first class today, and there's an article in there about the dental floss trick for slipping it under there and and seeing if you can gently dislodge stuck photos. Like I said, photos will likely be fading or turning colors due to the chemical um, activity going on there, due to the fact that these albums and their uh, stick a material is in no way archival. And you know, my heritage and others have come out with all of these apps we can use to enhance and improve our old photos. And so you may be, it, once you get a, a copy of these pictures, you may be able to use those apps to uh, return them to a more natural color. We're lucky to have all these, these uh, tools now. So let's talk about archival protection for folders, for photos. The photo pages come in all different sizes, for all different size photographs, all different page layouts. They even have special ones for um, the um, instant photos we all used to love to take, which are some of the ones that are turning colors. Um, and they also, they're also available are these um, archival bags that we talked about, print protectors in all different sizes that art or projects may come in. All right, I'm not gonna show you all kinds of examples of those because you can go online and look through those, but you know, there'll be different thicknesses. You want only clear. And um, you, know, you can size up what the availability is. Let's talk about binders. So perhaps you're thinking, I need some big binders. This six inch docking D-ring binder or locking D-ring binder is about the largest I have ever seen. It holds up to 1,225 sheets of paper. Of course, it would hold less if sheet protectors were involved, and it would also weigh a ton. So I don't think this is what you want for your projects. Can you imagine how heavy it would be loaded with paper, sheet protectors, and dividers? I prefer a two to three inch binder myself. We do want to make them accessible and manageable for showing and sharing.
We are. These are my particular favorite, the Avery Heavy Duty View Binders. Um, they have ex an extra wide cover. And you must, uh, this is essential when you're using um, um, sheet protectors because the sheet protectors, because uh, they stick out farther um, than just regular paper that was right into the, th the three rings. And um, you're going to want to use some dividers too, most likely in your binders. And they make those in extra large size. But these have an extra, um, extra large cover. You can see here they're, uh, well, they're even bigger than that, some of them. And uh, that's what you're going to need. Otherwise, your sheets are going to stick out and it's going to be a mess. Trust me, I've been there. <laughs> Binders should be D-ring or slant ring for extra capacity and because it's easier on the, the paper and the sheets that are in storage in there. It should have a one-touch ring lock and be archival safe. There are binder accessories that you'll probably want to look into. Um, I use some, some of these dividers and they you can get them in paper or archival paper or archival plastic in plain or with um, the, the, so the page is actually a sheet protector where you can slip in your own uh, homemade divider. Um, illustration sheet. Um, these, you must be sure you get the extra wide. You can see here. And, and that way they will um, extend as far out as the sheet protectors do. Other things you could look for. Um, let's see if I'm going to show you this. So this is what um, the measurement on these are. And they also make pockets. And those that you can put in your binders, I have some of those. And uh, for other things you'd like to slip in the binder that um, need some kind of an archival holder. And those come in paper and plastic as well. Some binders come with their own slip case. Slip cases can also be purchased separately. And you can see you can match the color of your binder, uh, get them in different looks. Uh, there are archival boxes that are also binders. You can see this one with the um, metal itch, <laughs> and this one over here that opens out a wide, wider and farther, and actually has D-rings in it. So that can be quite useful. Here's another look at those. This is a binder that comes with its own slip cover, and this is another box binder. This one is a, I think it's a plastic, um, and uh, this lid folds over it and it clicks shut. It's really nice. So more ex examples of binder storage. Now, several years ago, I purchased three of these from Hollinger Metal Edge, not for storing microfilm. I don't have that much of it at home, but because the box met the dimensions I was searching for, I used two of them to store extra large binders containing all the documents for my dad's personal history. I'm the last living member of my birth family and the only one left who could write his story, so I am doing it right. I have also compiled many of these keepsakes into electronic files through scanning, and my husband is the family scanner. Um, so I plan to purchase several more of these um, as the tight lids and the carry handle make them perfect for my needs. So I just really like these. 
this is a, a two inch um, slant ring binder in ledger or tabloid size, meaning 11 by 17. So yes, there are binders for these larger size sheets I've been showing you. And this is another idea for storing a large binder and that's getting purchasing an archival box, the right dimensions, and then you can just close it up in there and keep it dust free when you're not using it. Next, I'd like to share with you some of my favorite experts on preservation of family photos and heirlooms. First, Melissa Barker. Her blog is called A Genealogist in the Archives. This is a recording of Melissa from Roots Tech 2023 called Preserving Your Ancestors' Textiles and Handmade Treasures. So that's another, uh, if you have those kind of projects in your future, this is a great opportunity to watch uh, a wonderful presentation free of charge. Um, the recordings in the Roots Tech archive are kept there for about three years, so you don't want to put off any of the ones you really want to watch. Melissa has also recorded webinars for Legacy Family Tree. And these are some of those. If you, This is a subscription website, but if you've never had a subscription before, you can get your first year for half price, which is about $25. And um, this is a great, a great um, archive of helpful materials. I, I always have a subscription to this um, particular website. She Some of her presentations are preserving family records like a pro, disaster planning for the genealogist, safeguarding your stuff. Um, here's where she talks about some of the no-nos in uh, uh, archival storage, metal paper clips, rubber bands and tape, and uh, what to do about those and what to use instead. She's got preserving old family letters, tips from an archivist, and your ancestors didn't leave a paper trail, are you? Those are just some of the ones I thought you might like to uh, view. The next one is Denise May Levenick. Uh, and this is her website. And she's known as the family curator. There she is. Across the top of the page are links to additional resources her blog, and Ask the Curator, where you can sign up for tips and ask questions at no charge. These are her books. I gave the one on archiving photos to a close friend two Christmases ago, and she is still thanking me for it. So that tells you something. <laughs> she has also recorded... Um, uh, Presentations for Legacy Family Tree Webinars, 17 Secrets to Successful Scanning, Seven Steps to Manage Digital Files, How to Scan an Elephant, Digitizing Awkward Artifacts. I love that. Um, smartphoneography for genealogists, so using your smartphone to best advantage as the camera. And, and dirty Pictures. Saving your family photos from ruin. Yes, all kinds of pictures do need cleaning. Uh, caring for keepsakes, the top 10 family heirlooms, and the frugal curator. And the third one I'd like to share with you is Maureen Taylor. She's known as the photo detective. And this is the top um, of, the, of the screen at her homepage of her website. She has a blog. She has the Photo Detective podcast. She has books and she has Ask Maureen. So uh, she has uh, 13 presentations available at Roots Tech. And I put a link. You can search by, by presenter when you get in there. And so I put a link to the page that's about her. And so it contains all 13 of her presentations that are currently up online there. What you need to know about photo albums is one of those. 
This, uh, in order to find more at Roots Tech uh, on the topics of preservation, um, go to the, the Roots Tech page, select watch videos. Um, let me see here. There it is. Select watch videos at the top and it will present you this page. This is where you can uh, put in a search term or use these filters here. I just put in the word preservation and I got 161 results. Uh, I switched my search to the word, whoops. I switched my search to the word photos and found 203 hits and they're all free. So there's likely a presentation on whatever particular challenge or project you're facing. Peter Crow said, there are two kinds of people in the world, those who have had a hard drive failure and those who will. Make sure this common occurrence does not lead to the loss of your image collection. So let's talk about some ways of backing up these collections, both for sharing purposes and preservation purposes. Um, types of possible backups here. I just made a quick list of the flash USB jump drive, external hard drives, SSDs versus HDDs, uh, Dropbox uh, and a Dropbox alternatives, cloud backup, audio files and video files, and print. Paper copies still count as a backup. <laughs> so here's just a look at flash drives. And uh, when you do your projects, you can buy these by the bundle and uh, make copies for your Christmas presents, like I mentioned at the end of the last presentation. Let's talk about external drives. We used to just have hard drives or the HDD version, but we now also have SSDs, which may be referred to as semiconductor storage devices, solid state devices, or solid state disks. Solid state drives have some great features, including the fact that they run faster. They have mo no moving parts, so they run cooler but they're not the best choice currently for a long-term data backup due to the way data is overwritten and moved during the storage process. They have a shorter lifespan and they're significantly more expensive. So, how, uh, so for now, you'll want to stay with hard drives, otherwise known as HDDs, and just make sure whatever you purchase works with whatever computer and equipment you have at home. And isn't it nice that for once, the best thing for our projects is cheaper? <laughs> How often does that happen? Um, Dropbox is another uh, alternative for um, storing um, files and collections. And um, uh, what I did was include a link to this article here uh, in the syllabus. It's called, it says, it's called the 18 best Dropbox alternatives and competitors you need to know about in 2024. It's from August of this year. And I thought that might be a way for you to get ideas about other storage methods. Maybe something you already own has a built-in storage method that you just don't know about yet. Um, you'll need to research the best options for the audio and video files you need to preserve. We've got all kinds of those uh, oldies but goodies around. We've got our our film and our uh, eight, you know, the eight millimeter and film strips and microfilms and reel-to-reel -reel audio tape and records and cassettes and VHS tapes of various sizes, CDs, etc. So. I'm leaving you to research those because you know what you've got and, and uh, to preserve, and uh, that way you can decide what works best for you. Um, lastly, I'd like to mention the M-Disc. 
These are available in DVD and Blu-ray. Um, these are called one, Right Once Optical Disc Technology. And what it means is that you've got to be ready with your stuff. You have one shot to load on um, as much as you have ready at that point in time. And then you never re you can never record more to it again, but nothing can touch it either. And these are very durable. The way they run uh, is designed for the long term. Now, here's a question. <clears throat> How much backup is enough? This might, the answer I'm going to share with you comes from Backblaze and I've given you a bunch of links to, um, to some really good articles on Backblaze, including the one that this came from. It's called the 321 Backup Strategy and consists of three copies of data using two media types and one copy offsite. So the example is you have three copies of your data one on each, one each on your computer, your hard drive, and one in the cloud. You store your data on two different devices, your computer and your hard drive. The cloud could be considered a third one. And one of those copies is off-site, the cloud copy in this case. So that's just a, a simple example of how you can set up an effective uh, backup strategy. You can add more and different uh, medium, you know, whatever works for you. Uh, multiple, uh, multiple backup copies always have them, but don't keep them all on your desk at home. <laughs> Some more ideas for spreading copies of your work around are using putting one in a safety deposit box. Uh, share with family these, and as I've said before, these files will make excellent Christmas, Hanukkah, birthday, whatever gifts, Mother's Day, Father's Day. Uh, also, share, um, communicate with, and share with county historical and genealogical societies in the counties where your family lived. You could give them printed copies of your materials, but you could also give them an electronic copy. Uh, and share with repositories that collect family histories, such as the Allen County Public Library Genealogy Center in Allen County, Indiana, Family Search, and Internet Archive. Yes, paper copies count as backup, but any copies you print of family documents, histories, journals, diaries, etc., should be done using acid-free archival paper. Paper is way better than nothing. Our goal, family heirlooms well-preserved. Thanks for attending. Are there any questions? I don't have anything online yet, uh, Laurie. Uh, but uh, I know Don, uh, I like what Don did with the uh, Internet Archive with some of his stuff. Tell us about that, Don. Yes. Well, we donated all our, uh, my old uh, 78 collection and all the CDs, probably uh, 20,000 CDs and uh, those big 16-inch radio transcriptions that I got from, from Hollywood. I grew up in North Hollywood. And all that stuff, sent it all to Internet Archive. Uh, it's They're scanning it, they're running it off now. And they've got, uh, when we looked at, we sent it in oh, about a year ago. And in within three months, there had already been something like uh, several thousand views of some of the stuff. If it's still in copyright, they won't show all of it. They'll only show the first uh, 15 sec or 30, 30 seconds, I guess it is, of the CD or the vinyl. But uh, uh, once it's out of copyright, the whole thing is available and you could download the whole thing for free. Anybody can. It's a wonderful uh, uh, storage thing. Resource. That is wonderful. That is great.
you can upload other things as well to them. Um, yeah. The histories. And... Yeah, they've got a, what they call the uh, Wayback Machine mm -hmm. that uh, it has copies of all the, since 1996, they have copies of, of the internet. You can look at our website for the UV tag website from back from when we started it. You can see what it looked like in the early days. I know we donated our family history to the um, family history library in Salt Lake and also in BYU and and um, it's digitally online. But then when I started looking through it, I my husband's biography sit in there and we put a picture of him. Um, with two carrots stuck up his nose, and oh. all at once I realized, I went, oh, well, maybe we should have done a little editing <laughs> before we put that out there for the public to see how fun my husband is, but anyway, that's just something to consider. Um, a family great. history is wonderful, but... Yeah, they'll say, great, great, grandpa must have really been a hoot. He, he was a hoot. He is a hoot. He's a hoot. He's, um, the, yeah. You mentioned, you mentioned consider, Melissa Barker uh, on yeah, her stuff. On we yeah. had her speak several times while I was the. Uh, oh yes, uh, Melissa. On board, yeah, yeah, on the uh, uh, she's, UGA she's here, uh, yeah. virtual chapter, and those are probably still available because she's in Tennessee, as I recall, an archivist yeah. back there, and yeah. uh, she gave at least one or two talks that I can remember. So those are probably available too. Yeah. Now, she, um, in our um, newsletter this month, and um, the note from the editor, I, I included a link to her website because she is a, an, a great resource for yeah. things like this, isn't she, Laurie? Yeah. Laurie also has a lot of resources in our um, newsletter, um, which, gee, for $15 a year, it's, boy, wow, what a great <laughs> resource. I. Um, we got to uh, get that available so hey. that's saved on Internet Archive because it's not yeah. now. No. Yeah, we do. That's what, a great idea. What uh, one of the uh, uh, things that I've enjoyed doing, Laurie, is using your suggestion to put stuff on family search. The uh, uh, we, for example, we took uh, Dion's dad's uh, early journal. Uh, mm -hmm. that he did when he was 15, 16, 17 years old. Mm -hmm. It was put up on uh, little notebooks like this size. Mm -hmm. uh, we scanned all those pictures uh, and then uh, put them in PDF files sequentially so that... Uh, uh, and then I had to cut it into three PDFs because of the file size limitation in uh, uh, family search on how large it can be. But all those journal pages are uh, there on his uh, memories page uh, in uh, family search. Yeah. Are they all handwritten then? They were yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, just visual. Did you transcribe them also? Uh, we've had someone transcribe them, uh, okay. but we and haven't this... put them on family search oh, yet. That would be helpful to have it side by side with the transcription, so it would be searchable. Yeah. yeah that, I've got a lot of projects to do, let me tell you. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, more, that's yeah. more work, yes. <laughs> yeah, Dad right. journals, and <laughs> he had a teaching um, journal where he kept all of his lessons and... Uh, Oh, all kinds of things. Um, you know, there are other things to back up, which I could have gone on and added to this lesson, but that th I even included, I in included some material about, um, I think there was a Backblaze article on how to, to um, preserve your email files, how to preserve, you know, all these different files that we have. I mean, we've got our phone and we've got... Yeah. All this stuff that's got we've got all of these different um things like face facebook and all these places and you may you know we, we would probably want to and uh, blogs we would want to have a backup of all of those and so there are methodologies for doing that and that's another thing to consider you know do you know any do you know any way to save texts from an iphone into a text file on a computer. 
because I've got all kinds of family history like you're talking about, but I can't save it. I don't. Uh, I'm not an expert with the... Uh Well, I don't use any eye products at all. So, and then as Jerry could tell you, I actually use a phone as a phone. So, uh, yeah. Well, if you use an Android, a there's there's a free program for Android that will save all the texts automatically to your, your computer, but yeah. not with I. Yeah. Well, thank goodness we're on on Android then. <laughs> yeah, right. What what program is that, Don? Uh, I've forgotten the name of it, but I used it for years until they, the, with with the low vision clinic, they tell you go to eye because eye has so much better features for low vision, which it does. But it also lacks some features that Android has. Oh. <laughs> That's a problem. By the way, Backblaze, I started with them for backup and I've been using it for, oh, at least 10 years. Yes. They are so much cheaper. They were one fourth the price for a backup of what I was paying before. I pay now, I think it's $95 a year and I'll back up. Uh, I think I've got four terabytes of stuff backed up on, on Backblaze. Everything on any one computer for the same price for the year. We, we switched to it the year. Do you remember they gave away, if you were at Roots Tech, they gave away um, one year's free of Backblaze. Did they? And yeah. We switched to that then, and we never switched back to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's where I first learned about them. Is at Roots Tech. Because I think what, what we were were we doing Carbonite before Jerry or some I forget. Yeah, what, what it was. It was Car Carbonite's one of the other big ones. But yeah, hey, by the way, <laughs> some of the older Roots Techs you mentioned three years back. There's older than that available on Roots Tech now. I noticed you can go back several more years. Oh, really? And, yeah, some I, I, it's quite obscure. I, I discovered it quite by accident. Well, you, you know, can click on it, and they recorded some classes of mine in uh, uh, I think it was 2018. So at one point, those had dropped off. The the they, uh, they might be back on there now. Well, yeah. what happened was, I in feeling frustrated, I just googled my title, and I found it on another LDS page. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it, they took they took it off but they didn't take it off the web really they just put it in another place and oh. so now my idea is that if you saw anything at all in the past you know just look up the title and uh google it right <laughs> I, 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 I wonder if that's backed up on internet archive i wonder if roots tech is backed up on internet archive well it ought to be but it also ought to be backed up on in the uh, yeah, uh, yeah roots tech right. itself yeah. Oh, yeah yeah the classes that would that's a good idea i hope they're doing that because you know. okay marilyn okay let's draw this to a conclusion do we have um do we want to mention viewers where they're from um anything about that or um, they did not uh, nobody indicated where they were watching from oh okay i should have uh, <laughs> asked for that at the very beginning thank you so much for joining us and larry again thank you for the immense amount of work and for the background that you are willing to share and to, um, to benefit and you are a real example of what uv tag's organization is about and we will conclude thank you all <laughs>